dragons, but three copies of Jace Farin's Prodigy on top of copies of Dragon Lord Ojutai, Dragon Lord Salumgar, and Slumgar the Drifting Death. A Temple of Silence is where things will begin here for Eric Smith. Data Lawyer will take a draw step here. Dismal backwater for him, so Smith knows what he's up against, I think, right away now as Data Lawyer goes up to 21. Wind swept Heath to be sacrificed. Smith will fall down to 19. There is a basic forest. Let's see what the turn two play is here for Smith. It's just a face of Dent Protector. Got to get started somewhere. Exactly. We saw, if you take away any lesson from the match that we just saw between Ross Mirman and Drud Fabiano, it's game one with the dead removal spells, knobs on Agro's deck. Even if they generate a lot of card advantage, there's no guarantee they're going to be able to win the long game because Esper Dragons, Blue Black Control, they just have more powerful haymakers when you get later on in the game. Important just to get on the table and start attacking. And there for two with a Dent Protector, a windswept teeth, and a passing of the turn there for Data Lori. Polluted Delta from Data Lori. He'll just simply pass the turn back over to Smith. Smith with a Plains. And we'll see what's next here for Eric. He'll play an Obzon Charm, looking to get some cards, I assume. And that's exactly what the former Invitational Champion will do. So Anafenza and Obzon Charm are the draws. And Bile Bile will take care of the Den Protector while Smith is tapped out. Hanger back Walker, the draw here for Eric Smith. Perhaps it's time to play that for two, but he'll go with a Siege Rhino. And a really good Den Protector there for Smith. Got him for two points of damage, traded with a Bile Blight. Yeah, can't be too upset with that, right? Good exchange. De Delori does have a land to play there in Caves of Coilos. That's the land he will play. See if he has an answer to the Rhino. For now, he'll just pass the turn back over to Smith. Smith will draw. In comes Siege. Rhino Hero's downfall is going to take care of that. Shields are down here for Smith to resolve whatever he'd like. There's Nana Fenza. Pass the turn back. Will Smith over to De Delori. De Delori with a Jace. Not a card we see a lot of Nesper Dragons. They try to stay creatureless for the most part outside of the Dragon cards. However, here is Jace. Data Lori does have a lot of high impact cards to flash back, though. His deck is much more about controlling the board. Not a lot of counter spells. The four copies of Sloan Garscorn and only two copies of Dissolve. But Bio Blade, Crux of Fate, Heroes Downfall. Foul Tongue Invocation, Thought Seize, a lot of really powerful cards to flash back with Jace. And Offensa comes across for four points of damage. Data Lori will have to take that fall to 12. No, just pass the turn back. Temple of Enlightenment there in Data Lori's hand. That'll be the land for the turn. Time to scry here for Mike. Top card will go to the bottom. He has been a bit behind the entire game, looking to catch up and eventually turn the corner, but for now he'll just have to pass the turn back. So we'll see what Smith has here on the end step. As keep in mind, he elected not to play a spell. Probably represents a creature removal spell, maybe an Obzon charge, awesome cards. Looks like he's going to go with Hero's Downfall. He'll have to take one to cast it. We'll see if this resolves or if Data Lori has a response. Does have an active Jace out there. Going to start, it looks like, by activating Jace. And discard Dig Through Time. Was a little bit under the gun. Yeah. Could also have a second dig through time in hand. Here comes Anafenza again. They are going to fall to four. Now, one thing to keep in mind, that Jace no longer in the graveyard because of Anafenza, so we'll have that exiled. And the graveyard count certainly does matter here. Especially if there's a second dig through time in oh, hand. Oh, yeah. That is a very big deal. Now, here's Fleece Main Lion.
Smith hoping that this will resolve. You see his hand here, Dent Protector, Hanger Back Walker, which he has just cast, Obzon Charm, and maybe the big payoff there in Wingmate Rocker. I agree it's not particularly good in this matchup, but it could be a payoff card in this particular game. Well, this is a great setup here for Smith because he is a little bit exposed to a sweeper right now, deploying the second threat in the police main line. So by playing Hanger Back Walker, what this means is if De Delore untaps and hits Smith with a sweeper, Eric has a creature left over, the 1-1 one -one Thopter. He can then untap, attack, and raid a wingmate rock. Yep. So a very good hedge against a sweeper here. And if De Delore is just on spot removal spells, well, now Eric has three threats in play against opponent with five mana and uh, no ability right now seemingly to answer. Dig through time here from De Delore. He's found two cards that he's halfway. The other five will go to the bottom. One card in his graveyard now is the Resolve Dig. So we'll see if De Delore can find some resources to get out of this sticky situation. He's at seven facing down lethal next turn. Dragonlord Ojitai in hand, but Dragonlord Ojitai might not be the kind of card that can stabilize this board. Nope. I mean, next turn, Smith gets to make a very nice attack with Anafenza and Fleece Main Lion, with which he can go monstrous. Dragon Lord Ojitai, very good on stable boards, but this board is not that. Hero's downfall in De Delore's hand at this point. The question is, does he have enough time and mana to get all of the resources out of his hand? Another concern is how much black mana does he have? He only has three in play, and a lot of the removal spells in his deck are double black. So even if he has two heroes downfalls, for example, he can't cast them all. And there's no Urborg on the other side of the table. But that play from Smith last turn was very, very good. Yeah. There's a hero's downfall to take care of the fleece main line. Took advantage of his resources in such a way that in the, even the worst case scenario of a sweeper, he would still have some gas left in the tank. And he's clearly good against no sweeper as he still has multiple threats in play attacking for close to lethal. And there's an attack for six. Data Lori is going to fall down to one. So that flooded strand, well, that's off the table now. Data Lori will take a draw. Picked up a copy of Dragon Lord Salumgar, but not going to be able to use that one. Eric Smith going to win game number one here over Mike DeDelore. I was on aggro, up a game over Esper Dragons very quickly here. That's exactly how Smith wants those games to go because he didn't draw a lot of his dead cards that game, so that means he can get the dead cards out and the good cards in. Yeah, that's a big, big win there for Smith game number one. Very well navigated, too. I, I think that that previous turn with the Fleece main line, the hanger back walker, set Smith up in such a way where he could beat a sweeper potentially. Maybe he couldn't beat two sweepers, but could beat one, uh, and certainly could beat spot removal. All day Delore had was spot removal, and Smith won pretty comfortably. Time to take a look at the sideboards here. We will start with Mike Day Delore and his Esper Dragons deck. What's he got to turn around this matchup? Another copy of Ashiok, two copies of Foul Tongue Invocation, a Perilous Vault, a Stratus Dancer, a Dragon Lord's Prerogative, a Languish, a Dragon Lord Salumgar, a Thoughtseize, an Ultimate Price, an Orb of Warding, two Disdainful Strokes, two Drowned Sorrows. I think we're going to see pretty similar sideboarding here to what Fabiano did. We're going to see the additional copies of Foul Tongue Invitation come in, the Perilous Vault, the Languish, the Dragon Lord Salumgar, the additional copy of Ashiok, and maybe a Thoughtseize as well. For Eric Smith, two Elspeth Sons Champion, two Self Inflicted Wound, two Herald of Torment, three Tragic Arrogance, three Thoughtseize two copies of Duress and an Ultimate Price. So we get the easy swap here of the three Dromokas commands and the two copies of Ultimate Price coming out for the five discard spells in Thought Season Duress. Herald of Torment and Elspeth Sun Champion are both reasonable cards, and he has two copies of Heroes Downfall in his deck, which are not great, so he might sideboard more heavily than that. But at the minimum, the three copies of Thought Season and the two copies of Duress are coming in here. A lot of good options here for both players, it seems. Yes. Not too surprising here. These two decks can get pretty flexible at times, so we'll see how each player likes the sideboard. They're about ready for game number two, but we got to talk about Grand Prix Atlanta. We got to talk about the big Grand Prix where the details have been announced for November 13th through the 15th. Got an awesome play mat here, of course, but a little commander feel this go around. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of commander events. A lot of the celebrities of the commander community, like Sheldon Minery, like MJ Scott, they're going to be there for panels, for cosplay, the whole shebang. You can go over starcygames.com slash GP Atlanta, get more information. Use the hashtag GP Atlanta while searching for information or posting about the event. Again, this is going to be Battle for Zendikar Seal, November 13th through 15th in Atlanta, Georgia. We're looking forward to that show. We're expecting a fantastic turnout. As Patrick did mention, Betty Smith, MJ Scott, Sheldon Menery, the Commander versus Superstars as well. And heck, we'll even be there doing coverage and a meet and greet with you guys 
on Friday from 5 to 7 p.m. Looking forward to everything that's taking place. You guys know how Star City Games does Grand Prix. We're looking to blow it out November 13th through the 15th as we do get ready here for game number two between Eric Smith and Mike Dedalori. Obs on aggro, Esper Dragons. Data Lawyer will be on the play here for game number two with the control strategy. Much better deck on the play than the draw, of course, but I think you can say that just about every deck here in standard. Curious to see what these Dragons decks will look like post-rotation. Because we're going to keep a lot of the powerful cards. Slumgar, Scorn, Falcon Invocation, Dragonlord, Roachdie, Dragonlord, Slumgar. All of that stuff. I think the deck still stays in, intact. A lot of the same cards are there. Uh, the loss of Dissolve is, is tough, but uh, this deck is more about removal and less about counter spells than a lot of classic blue-black and blue-white control lists. I think Runa's Path is a lot worse for this deck than Hero's Downfall because uh, yeah. you want everything to be an instant once you have counter spells in your deck for maximum flexibility. Yep. Not to say it's bad or anything. But it's just nowhere near as good as Heroes Downfall. Right. Sansep Citadel to start here for Smith. Data Lori has a Temple of Deceit. There's a Swamp here for Mike. And now a Chase. So a good early start for him. You have to imagine most of Smith's cheap removals out of the deck. Yes. And cards like Chase put Smith in a bit of a squeeze here because he doesn't want to leave in a bunch of ultimate price and hero's downfall type of cards. But Jace uncontested is very, very powerful. Yep. And it's tough to sideboard when your opponent has that kind of flexibility. Here's a Jace activation. Haven't drawn discard here for Data Lori. Get working on that graveyard to flip that Jace. There goes Dismal Backwater. There's a Temple of Enlightenment. Time for Data Lawyer to scry. Top card becomes the bottom card. Pass the turn back. Smith will draw. Land of Waste. In comes Fleece Main Lion. Data Lawyer will fall to 17. And now a Thought Seize. Get an idea of what Data Lawyer is working with. He's got a Disdainful Stroke. A Dragon Lord Ochtine. Just a couple of lands there. Included Delta and Dismal Backwater. Hand is a bit of a mess here for Data Lawyer. It really is. Without the Disdainful Stroke, which Smith can take, Data Lori very vulnerable to just getting hit by a chain of Siege Rhinos. And without the Dragon Lord Ojatai, his hand doesn't really play towards anything. Now here's Hanger Backwalker. Great start here for Smith. Let's see if Jace can catch Data Lori back up here, however. The draw. It's a dig through time. It's a good one to get here. He can loot, that's card number three. He's got a polluted delta, that's card number four. Four mana in play, he can dig through time. Here's an activation. A flood strand is what he's picked up. Time to discard. Beat down time. Just fleece main line. Got to hold steady with Hanger Back Walker. Leads me to believe that Smith wants to grow it up a little bit. Well, he had two different paths he can take right there. He can hang back with the Walker, pump that up, and say go. Or he could play one of his four mana spells into the Disdainful Stroke, which he knows about. But at least he gets the Disdainful Stroke out of Data Lori's hand. Because Smith has Obs on Charm in his hand, he doesn't have to play a Disdainful Stroke this turn. He can simply grow Hanger Back Walker and draw two cards. And that's probably more efficient than running a Siege Rhino into a copy of the Sample Stroke. Dig through time here for Data Lori. He needs some help. Lost a Dragon Lord Ochotaito with Thought Seize. Is under the gun here from Fleece Main Line and Hanger Back Walker. He's got Jace going, but he also just removed most of the graveyard for Jace. So. Yep, he's going to have to restart. Now, the graveyard didn't matter all that much because Data Lori didn't have anything good to flash back, but uh, Jace is just going to be on Merfolk looter duty for a little while, most likely. Data Lori would like to get that flipped as soon as possible, start flashing back cards like Heroes Downfall, Crux of Fate, and what have you, if you can get there. Tough spot here. But Dig Through Time is very powerful, so it's done resolving. Smith will take the opportunity now, while Data Lori is tapped out, to grow Hanger Back Walker, sacrifice the fetch line, perhaps a Heroes Downfall on Jace, too. We'll see. I think we might see an Obzon Charm resolved right now. Okay. 
Looks like a little bit of shortcutting taking place. As Dave Delorean is already untapped and drawn his card for the turn. So we'll see if Smith announced anything. It doesn't look like he did. He just wanted to sacrifice the fetch line now. Dave Delorean will activate Jace yet again. Polluted Delta the draw. You see he's got a hero's downfall in hand. Still has that disdainful stroke. So still some powerful cards going on there if they line up appropriately. Hands improving. Jace tends to do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it does. Caves the discard, dismal backwater of the land. Data Lawyer will gain a life, of course. And Data Lawyer will pass the turn back. Here's Obzon Charm. Smith will pay two to draw two. Obzon Charm, Den Protector the draws. Really good set of cards here, playing for a long game. Hero's Downfall going to take care of Fleece Mainline while Smith is tapped out. Smart play there by Data Lori. Well, this does give a window for Smith to hammer him with a four mana spell. This is true. The shields are down to Sameful Stroke. There's that four mana spell. Good play here by Smith. Takes his window to get a four mana spell into play. Back over to Data Lori we go. He'll sacrifice a polluted delta. And I think De Delore is trying to set up a line of play. That delta is now card number four. Jace can flip for card number five. That allows him to flash back a hero's downfall on the rhino. That does leave Jace vulnerable to being attacked down by Hangerback Walker, but it's at least something. Yep. The Telepath Unbound has arrived. Starts on five counters, of course. to slow down the old rhino here. And now there's Salungar. Okay. We're working towards something. Well, this is a much better line of play than just having the Jace die by flashing back the hero's downfall. I got to say, and we've talked about this a little bit over the course of this weekend, how impressive has Salungar been? It's been very, very good. I have really been impressed with that card. An excellent answer to hang your back, Walker. And Slumgar was part of decks, various control strategies, well before Hangerback Walker was part of the mix. So Absolutely. It's not, it's not like this is totally new territory, but it's been great. Here's the rest. There goes Dick through time. Going to leave Data Lori with just a disdainful stroke. And I think that Smith has the opportunity to go a little bit wide here. He can hammer Data Lori with another Rhino here. And if Data Lori leaves up Disdainful Stroke, he's got Obzon Charm and Den Protector to spend his mana on for a little while. Okay. So Smith is very well set up here. Now, things can go really wrong. Crux of Fate rolls off the top of the deck, and, and Smith's in a lot of trouble. That's really bad news, then. Given what he knows about, Smith's in a pretty good spot. Foul Tongue Invocation, I believe, the draw. Not great. Well, it's not that bad because Data Lori can get rid of the Hanger Backwalker. Well, one assumes Smith will sacrifice the Hanger Backwalker. Yeah. Data Lori can then attack with Slumgar, get rid of the Thopters. And he's got Jace available to flash back either Hero's Downfall or Foul Tongue Invocation as appropriate. If he flashes back the Foul Tongue Invocation, we're talking about three life along the way, too. So, or excuse me, eight life along the way, too, if he casts it twice. Looks like flashing back a dig through time is Data Lori. He's just never been able to get ahead in these games. Yeah. That's been the issue for him so far. The concern I have about this line of play, getting back the dig through time here, okay. is uh, Data Lori's potentially looking at a really big attack next turn. And he only has access to Foul Tongue Invocation, which doesn't do anything about the Siege Rhinos. Just going to pass the turn back over to Smith. Smith will draw. 
Smith's just going to shrug their shoulders, come on in here. Dare him to have something. Smith's got some pretty good insurance in hand, too, with a card like Obzon Charm. Yep, can probably get over these last points of damage. Dent Protector's going to be pretty redundant. Here's Foulzong Invocation. This will allow Data Lord to gain some life here. So this is where things will start. Before blocks, foul on invocation here by Data Lori. Smith will sacrifice the hanger back walker. Data Lori will go up to nine. Siege Rhino will get blocked. The other one will come through. So Data Lori is going to fall back to five. And now this is another window where Smith can resolve a four mana spell like Soren. Where Disdainful Stroke is not available, and if Data Lori untaps and leaves up two mana, Smith again has a bunch of three mana plays to work with. Yep. He's had him in the squeeze the entire time. And I kind of like taking the opportunity to resolve Soren if he can. The issue is it might be the lowest impact card in his hand. He might be better served with, with Dem Protector or Anafenza being on the board next turn than Soren. Looks like he's going to go with Anafenza. Pass the turn back. And I think Smith just senses some vulnerability on De Delory's side of the table and is trying to get the game over with. Feels like De Delory might just be barely hanging on. However, Crux of Fate in hand might really change some things here. Yep. Oh, boy. Yeah. That is very bad news for Smith. Non-Dragons bite the dust. And now Slumgar coming in. We're getting a little, a little offensive. And Crux of Fate in the graveyard ready to come back. Very true. Oddly enough, we've seen, you know, cards like Hostilities and Languish. I think maybe some have forgotten about Crux of Fate. And I think that Day Delore is on zero copies of Languish in his main deck. He's got one in the sideboard. So this Notable. is just a Crux of Fate deck. Now the mana is still down from Disdainful Stroke. You know, talking about cards and we flash back. Crux of Fate is one, Foul Telling Invocation is another. Yeah pretty good right now. Smith might be thinking Soren. Looks like he's thinking Dent Protector face down on Megamorph a little bit later. Data Lori will take a draw. Picked up a copy of Hero's Downfall. And the leftovers in Data Lori's hand are no joke. They are pretty good. Nothing to be upset about. Looks like Jace is going to go down. Got a flashback foul telling invocation. Get some life. Dead Protector will be on Megamorph. We'll see what Smith wants to return, however. I think that's the harder part here. Well, it almost has to be a three mana spell at this point because the sample stroke is a concern. Very true. Looks like he's going to go to rest. Try to clear the path for something. Yep. Here comes Salamgar. Now here's Duress. Just Anful Stroke, Bioblight, Heroes, Downfall, Dragon Lodo, Tai. You weren't kidding mm. about those leftovers. Those are tough leftovers to beat. Jeez. And the problem is that if Smith goes for some sort of slow value game, then Dragon Lord Ojo Tai is going to be really hard to beat. If he tries to play fast, he's playing against a lot of removal. There's Bioblight. On Morph Dead Protector again. Does getting back to rest get you anywhere? I don't think so. He's going to have to beat the board next turn because yeah. I, I would imagine Dave Delore's plan here is to cast Dragon Lord Ojitai. Make a lethal attack the next turn. And lock out all two toughness creatures out of Smith's deck as well. I'm going to get back a Rhino. Chase moving up. Slumgar coming in. Nice Dragon Lord Ojitai. Yeah, I guess that's the one thing maybe you forget about with Dragon Lord, excuse me, with Slumgar, is that when it's when 
a dragon attacks. Right, it stacks up. Yeah. Doesn't show up often, but when it does, it's quite good. Here's a Siege Rhino. That's going to resolve. So Data Lawyer two turns away from Lethal, and I think Smith may have drawn another Siege Rhino. Yeah, he's got one in his hand, so gets a little bit interesting here. Well, Data Lawyer is still with a downfall. Well, I, I certainly think that Mike is in a good spot, and I like attacking here with both creatures. Going to trigger Dragon Lord Ojatai. Take a look at the top couple of cards, and a card like Slumgar Scorn will be lights out here. Mm -hmm. You see the one language that he's looking at. That's from the sideboard. So I guess a Rhino trigger gets Smith up to nine, mm -hmm. meaning the two dragons aren't lethal. Dismal Backwater brings Data Lawyer up to seven, though. So now back-to-back -back Rhinos is no longer lethal. Right. And Chase is going up to three, meaning that he's got a removal spell at the ready. I think we'll be going to game three in a moment. I think so. There's Rhino. Smith will gain some. Data Lawyer will lose some. Nine to four. Smith is hoping that Data Lawyer doesn't have much. Ultimate price to draw. Yuck. Eh, maybe not. Might slow up a little bit. All right, here he comes with both. Slumgar Scorn, Foul Tongue Invocation. I think the Foul Tongue is now going to be too much to beat. The Counterspell is very good as well. I think the Counterspell, yeah. I, I honestly think either one is probably too much to beat. Jace is going to get cashed in. Hero's Downfall will take care of the Siege Rhino. One thing Day Delore could have done, he could have done with Bioblight yep. because of the Salungar triggers. Not sure if he knew that or not. Uh, maybe he doesn't want to have to worry about a random pump spell like Gather Courage sure. being a factor. It's just safer this way. Yeah, Dent Protector attempting to be more. Slumgar Scorn will take care of that. And we get ready here for game number three as Mike Delore able to tie it up against Eric Smith. As for Dragons, I was on aggro. They're throwing haymakers at each other, but Day Delore was able to walk out of that one alive. And... Uh, this is, you're seeing a lot of the same stuff that you saw in the, the Miriam versus Fabiano match, where because Abzan Aggro is capable of drawing so many cards between Abzan Charm and Dem Protector, it's very hard for decks like Esper Dragons to hold them off just by countering and removing stuff. Abzan Aggro is going to look at too many cards. So the real recipe is for these control decks to hold off long enough to resolve some large proactive threat that invalidates a lot of what's going on on the aggro side of the table. So Dragon Lord Ojatai, Slumgar, the Drifting Death, threats like that, Ugin that we saw on Fabiano's list, those are very important to shut the door and invalidate all the extra cards the Abzan Aggro deck looks at over the course of the game. That's what Abzan Aggro is all about. Yes. It can, it can hold off, it can play against Heroes Downfalls and Dissolves for a while. Mm -hmm. You look at a lot of cards. Uh, but cards like Dragonlord Slumgar are often worth several cards out of the Aggro deck. They're very hard to answer, and I think those are the critical pieces of eventually winning the game. I, I think that's some of the appeal of playing a deck like this, is that, it, you know, it, it's called Obzon Aggro, but it's a 26 land aggressive deck that can go really long with you. Yeah, Hanger Back, Walker, Down Protector, Obzon Charm gives you a lot of staying power. The Planeswalkers as well help a lot with that. These players will shuffle up here for game number three. About 20 minutes left to go in the match here. We'll see Eric Smith on the play. We're going to talk about SCG Game Night, the very popular promotion. You see the Krakens on our lapels this weekend, as it is September after all. But we've got some new stuff coming in both October and November. Yeah, we send out these kits every month with a new pin and a new foil card. Stores can run Game Night however they want to, whatever format, sanctioned or unsanctioned, just get players in your store for some fun and friendly magic. This is the September kit that's available right now if you play at a Game Night. Coming down the pipeline here in October, we have the Hippo. If you want to get signed up for the November kit, which we have here, the Otter, head over to starcitygames.com slash game night. Get more information about the event that way. And contact your Star City Games in-store play representative if you want to bring game night to your store. Otter Von B. Hanging out. That's my dude. There he is. Look, I know I fought really hard for the Hippo, as did you, but Otter, Otter Von B is pretty sweet. He's ready to go. I'm just saying, that's all. Hanging out under the sea. <laughs> I'm... That fish is in a lot of trouble. I'm, I don't care what you say. That fish is in a lot of trouble. I can't wait to get the wide shot of this one. The play mat? Yes. Yeah. There's a bunch of otters just in the background cheering the otters along. Anything could happen. StarCityGames.com slash game night. More information. Game number three here between Eric Smith, Mike, and De Delore about to be underway here. Both these players still very much in top eight contention. Eric Smith wins this match. He's going to lock it up. 
He'll be 12 and one with only two rounds left to go. So nothing can go wrong for him. The former Invitational Champion and two-time two -time Invitational Top Eight competitor is happy with his opening hand. So we'll start with the Temple of Silence. Temple of Deceit there for Data Lori. We go back Smith's way. He does have a duress. The question is, does he have a creature to play early? He does have a den protector he can play face up. We saw that in game one. But he's going to play it just to Sansom Citadel. Not even fire off the duress. Just pass back. Yeah, I think he wants to save the duress for a spot where he's setting up multiple plays in a turn. Don't want to just fire that off and have Data Lori draw a premium spell that you can't touch. Sure. There's Fleece Main Lion. Here's Temple. Take a look at that top card. See where that's going to go. Looks like it's headed to the bottom. Nate Delore will draw. There's a flooded strand. Here comes Fleece Main. Nate going to take that three fall to 17. Here's Duress. Now I think we'll see a little bit of action here. Very strong opening here for Smith. He's got a clock in play as a duress. Dem protector in hand ready to get back duress. He's going to search up an island. Notable that he's searching up an island, not a planes there. Though it yep. appears no basic planes in the deck list. Zero. A little surprising. Right, this, this is a 2.5 color deck. You're touching white for Dragon Lord Ojitai and some sideboard cards. You would assume that there would be one planes in the deck to go get in spots like this. I think, I think it's a safe assumption. I mean, that's, why, that's why I might surprise there a little bit. But Falcon Invocation, Dissolve, Salumgar Scorn, Ugin. A lot going on there. Falcon Invitation, of course, cast to take care of Fleece Main Lion. But here you see the options here for Smith with his duress. A soft hand. It is pretty soft, yeah. Not too surprised to see him take Dissolve, especially with Slumgar scorn in hand and there's no dragon. Now here's a Morph, it's the Dent Protector. So this is something that Smith can really take advantage of. And for Data Lori, very important to draw a removal spell now. Otherwise, this on Morph's next turn, another Duress hits him. And Not, he's behind on a lot of different fronts. It wasn't a removal spell, but it was a dragon to go along to Slumgar scorn. It was a copy of Slumgar the Drifting Death. So that's, that's not so bad. Yeah. See what Smith wants to do now. I'm going to start by attacking with a two. I think that's the easy part. And now there's a fleece main line. Might be time for that scorn, yeah. I think you got to use it when you can. Exactly. I, I, he knows that Smith has the availability to Dem Protector back at duress. It's the only spell in Data Lori's hand, and he needs time. So uh, all of these are compelling arguments to just go ahead and counter the Fleece Main Lion. Yeah. There's Ashiok. A couple of creatures that'll hit there, Fleece Main Lion and Hanger Backwalker. Dismal Backwater will gain Data Lori a life, and we're going to head back Smith's way. He'll take a draw step here. I believe self-inflicted wound is what he's found. A little awkward right now. Yeah, he needs to give himself some answers to Dragon Lord Ojitai. Absolutely. But, you know, we, we now hit a point where his hand is going to get frozen up most likely by the Dragon Lord Slumgar that's coming next turn. Even if he casts Siege Rhino, he's not in a position to attack the following turn. And Ashiok is threatening to do stuff too. There is Siege Rhino. And you saw Smith come across in the red zone right to Day Delori. So he said, I'm going to ignore Ashiok. I'll pass the turn back. Play a Rhino. Looks like he's going to try to get Day Delori dead and not worry too much about Ashiok. Risky business. Well, there's no alternate line of play. You, you knock the Ashiok down to three. He can still get back the Fleece Main line if he wants it. So you're not accomplishing very much there. You want to get in your points because you're following up with Siege Rhino. That's a couple more points of damage. The Fleece Main line coming on back. There's the Haven. Here's Salumgar. And again, Salumgar continues to look impressive. So much toughness, keywords matter. A lot to like about this dragon. There's a forest.
Honestly, Smith may need to do something like cast self-inflicted wound and alpha strike. Just to get the fleece midline off the board and, and try to get some damage. He to gets him. him down to nine. Let's assume that he blocks the den protector. Then he's down to five. There's some hope you might be able to close the game out. It sounds like it, it sounds like to me at least that you, is it time to maybe take a drastic measure like that, kind of panic a little bit. Uh, well, I, the other line of play here, I'm not sure what the other line of play is. The the other thing that Smith gets if he makes an alpha strike this turn is if you assume Daedalore is going to block your den protector, you get to unmorph and get back the duress. You duress away the Ugin, and now your board is S Siege Rhino against Slumgar. Daedalore is at five. It's not going great, but you're you're not done by any means. I thought we might have, hero. we might have Hero's downfall, but it looks like we're going to have a morph instead. Pass the turn back. We know Dandelory's hand. Ugin is the big one. Ashok's going to move up. Thought sees at a Fenza. Sans up Citadel. So this line of play from Smith is also, I think, totally reasonable. He's still setting himself up for a good alpha strike next turn if he wants it. Okay. And he's more mana efficient. Time to draw. Keep in mind, Smith does have a hero's downfall in hand. Gonna unmorph Den Protector, it appears. Yeah, I think this is on Morph Den Protector. Get back to rest. Take care of the Ugin. Also get an idea of what you're playing against, too, yep. which is right now nothing. There's just Nurboard. Yep. Unmorph the other Den Protector. Get back. Whatever. I suppose self-inflicted wound to cut Daedalore off of being able to Ashiok back the Anafenza. There's no attack there at all. Maybe that's a little surprising. There's her board. Here comes that offensa. Oh, this sets up Smith beautifully here because now he can get back the self-inflicted wound if he wants it. Kill that, put him down to seven, and then it's a lethal attack. Yeah, this, yep. is, a, this is a great setup here. Unless Daedalore drew something very good, and I, I think... Yep. Okay. Yeah, he did. Drew, drew a counterspell. Yes, he did. Now, that said, you can still Hero's Downfall here and try to push through some damage. And Smith does have a Siege Rhino in hand, so it, it would cause Data Lori to have to top deck again. Yes. And top deck in a big way, because he's got to be able to beat the Siege Rhino in hand plus the board. Correct. Not an easy thing to do. Now, Data Lori doesn't know about that Siege Rhino, but when you're playing at Sobzon, that's always in the back of your mind. When my opponent's making an attack like this, which isn't lethal, he's going to lose something. It's a tough block here for Michael. Yeah, it... it it has to be something like dig into scorn plus languish to get out of this. Asking a lot. Going to cash in the haven, get back the Ugin. In case he draws a land here. The problem is the Siege Rhino. It wasn't a land, it was a copy of Bile Blight, which actually in most situations would be okay. Yeah, from where De Deloria is sitting, Bile Blight looks good. Yep. We know it's not because of Siege Rhino. Here is Bile Blight. And Smith knows the card in his hand, so he can untap very quickly, draw, play that Rhino, and that is going to do it. Eric Smith is going to win this match over Mike DeDelore. Two games to one. Obs on Agro will take care of Esper Dragons. And for Eric Smith, the former Invitational Champion, also top eight at our Season 3 Invitational in New Jersey a couple weeks ago, we got one player in the elimination rounds right now, and it is that Obs on Agro player. Yeah, that was a, a very well-played game three over there. Um, I may have been slightly more aggressive than Eric was in a couple of those spots. I was a little apprehensive about building up the board there in the face of a deck with Crux of Fate and so forth, maybe to try to get a couple points of damage. That said, Smith definitely had a plan for how he wanted to navigate those couple of turns there, was effective in being aggressive, used all of his mana, identify what De Delore's house was, does it, did his best to uh, mitigate it in the, in the event that De Delore drew them. Very, very well played game. Well, congratulations, Eric Smith. Not surprising to see a former Invitational Champion.